my son has taught me to pray in a very special way. And because he's a pastor's kid, he's, you know, praying all the time, praying before a meal. He goes, pray? And he goes, okay, pray. You pray. He goes, he tells me to close my eyes, and he prays. He goes, ah, blah, blah, food. Amen. Woo! <laughs> and, you know, sometimes I think that uh, when a kid prays, uh, it's the most innocent way to connect with God because for him, after he prays, he says, whoa, he lifts his hand and says, whoa, because he actually believes that God's alive. So now on every time we pray, no matter how weird it might seem, I want us to be childlike. The Bible tells us to be childlike when we come before God. So after I say amen, we say, Woo! Okay, come on, everybody practice. Lift your hands. It's, it's like, you know, put your hands in the air. You know, but we're not going to do that because it's mostly Asian people. And so I want you to pray with me. We're going to go. And when I say amen, everybody says, Woo! Oh, very good, very good. Okay. Uh, now do that with me after I pray. So let's pray together. <laughs> God, we come before you, and we want to say that, you know, a lot of us here are rediscovering the purpose for our life. A lot of us are going to good schools looking for jobs or in jobs that uh, might make us very comfortable in life, and that's what we're looking for. But I want to pray today, God, that you would come in this room and you would take us one step closer to really understanding what it means to really discover purpose, what it really means to find a meaningful and purposeful existence. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Woo! Wow, that's good. Look how exciting this church has become. So last week I talked about Valentine's Day. Don't worry, I'm not going to talk about sex. Um, but I'm going to talk about um, an anniversary. So I said, I thought I'd go here. And so, you know, at 2003, you know, or 2002, you know, it was one night before my anniversary. And what I should have done was the night before, done this. This is what I should have done, right? And everything would be great and happy. Because, you know, when you don't buy a gift for anniversary, you know, you're basically dead. <laughs> but my problem was I came back from work, and this is what I did instead. Uh, I fell asleep. <laughs> what happened was I came back from work, and I was really tired. I turned the TV on, and I told myself subconsciously, in a very loud way to myself, Sam, you need to go to Macy's and you need to pick out something for tomorrow night. And I said, I will. And watching TV, I fell asleep. In a very frightening reality, I woke up next morning with the sound of the alarm. And it was pretty scary because I was like, oh shoot, I forgot to buy the gift. And you know what that means? It means this might be my last anniversary. <laughs> and here was the problem. The problem was on Friday, uh, Lydia came with me to the internship to help me out in, the, in, in church. And I was doing my internship there, and I would fold bulletins there, like 1,000 of them. <laughs> so all you people went into church complaining, about, oh, I have to do so little. I did it too. So shut up about that. Just do it. God will take you places in his time. So I, I would go fold bulletins on Friday. I would create a thousand of them, and because I was so bad at it, you know, uh, my girlfriend came with me to have to do most of the work. Praise the Lord! Woo! And so, uh, and, and so this provided a great dilemma. So on the phone, I called her, and on purpose, I tried to talk her out of coming so I could go get the gift. And then she says, "Oh no." I'll go with you. I go, honey, I don't have that much work today. You know, I'm going to come back anyway. You know, lunch, we can have a little brunch and, you know, chill out later tonight, go to Outback, you know. And she goes, no, no, I want to spend the day with you. I was like, <laughs> you know. So we go to the internship, and then at 12, we're folding all the bulletins for, you know, the service there. And I, on purpose, again, tried to talk her out of going out to lunch. And I told her, why don't you stay today? And, you know, we have a lot of these to do. And I can't do them anyway, you know. You, I always mess it up. So why don't you do it? And I'll go get lunch real quick. That, that Chinese place is real good. And we're in Queens, so there are a bunch of them to pick up. For me. I mean, you know, so I'll go. And, and she says, I think on purpose, to punish me. She says, oh, no, honey. We can do this later together. Today it's all about together. And I was like, crap, you know? And so we go out, 
And now, I know that there's a mall five blocks down <laughs> where there's an Outback inside. Because, you know, every anniversary, we're at Outback. Okay? We, we don't pretend uh, all that stuff, all fancy candle stuff. We did that back in college. It's boring. We want meat and good conversation. <laughs> so I, on purpose, chose Outback because inside this complex, there is a Macy's. And because I've done this one day before, now I have to do this. <laughs> you know, so I'm in the mall. We're ordering the food. Now, I have to do Mission Impossible because I have to go to Macy's without her noticing me. So what I did was, honey, my stomach is really killing me. So I need to go to the bathroom. We ordered the steaks. I went to the bathroom, and I went into the, snuck in the bathroom, saw Lydia, and I started to, I had to sneak around so she wouldn't see me leave the exit. So I used other Asian people as shields. And there are plenty in supply because it was Queens. So I used them as shields, and I went out the entrance without her spotting me. And so I go out, and I go upstairs where I thought the entrance was. But you know those freaking big mall? The entrance is two blocks away from me. I swear to God. I had to go outside and it started raining. I had no jacket. I said, you know what? I am, I'm, I'm speedy. I could run this and be back in 30 seconds. Man, that's what you call delusion. And that's what we're in all the time. So I went to, I, you know, I, I ran to Macy's, you know. And imagine Lydia at Valent, I mean, you know, at anniversary, the steaks just come out. It's like, is he okay? And I go into Macy's, I go up, I pick the watch. Like, and I take my credit card, and then it's like six cents. I've just discovered that Macy's does not take Discover. What do you mean you don't take Discover? And I remember leaving the wallet there on purpose because to make sure she didn't think any funny business was going on. And I took one card out of the wallet without looking at it. And they said no. So I had to walk back, I had to run back and it turns out I was gone for 45 minutes. So I go in there, I sneak back, go into the bathroom, come out, I splash water in my in my shirt, and I sit down, and now I have to explain why I'm all wet. <laughs> not, you know, not sweat, but you know why I'm all wet everywhere. And she's like, are you okay? I'm like, oh, you know, man, I don't know about that much, that Chinese food I hate so much. Why, why were you in there for so long and why are you wet? Well, you know, I was working really hard in there. <laughs> and, you know, and, you know, Lydia was pretty suspicious and confused about what was going on. And just like that, a lot of times, we're confused about, you know, the purpose of the things that have happened in our life and the purpose behind the things that's going on in our life. And sometimes we're confused about how all those things make sense. You know, the Bible says that before the foundation of the world, he chose you to be. Say be. be. What's up, be, right? He chose you to be. Meaning, there could be no accident to why you exist. Because he chose you before you even could think about why you're being or why you exist. Let me tell you right now, there is no accident to why you are the wired you are, why you're weird the way you're weird and wired, why you're your nationality, why you have your personality. It was all on, come on, you're supposed to get that part. It was all on purpose. God put you here on purpose. He chose you to be, to exist before the foundations of the world. And a lot of times when we think about our purpose, and that's why this series we're going to talk about rediscovering purpose. Why rediscovering? Oh, because a lot of times we're doing things that's not our purpose. And your purpose existed before you were even here. Because God had you, God planned you in his mind. You are no accident. There's no accident why you're here today. Let me tell you, God had a plan for your life before you had a plan for your life. So the question that we're going to do in the next couple of weeks, and I want you to invite your friends, because I promise I'm not going to preach on sex. At least for a while. I remember some people came last week. I, you know, I had to use it. Valentine's Day, come on. You know, I had to use that idea. And people were like, oh, man, I should have never invited my friend today. They were telling me. But pr I promise, on purpose, invite their friends. 
that's looking for a purpose, especially the ones that's jobless, because there are a lot of them. And there are no jobs right now, and I know they feel like losers, because if you're a winner, you're supposed to have a job. So invite them, we're gonna do this you know, series on this rediscovering purpose from today. And the question I wanna to ask today is simple. The question is, how do you get rid of this clutter, this confusion when, when it comes to that talking about our purpose? Well, if you turn with me to Ephesians 1, I think two simple ways, two simple steps I think we can take to learn to rediscover our purpose and get rid of that clutter. And this is what Paul says in verse three, Ephesians chapter one, he says, Praise be to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessings in Christ. For he chose us in him before the creation. Before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his So listen, listen. He before the creation of the world, he chose you to he chose you to be. Forget the holy part. We'll talk about that later. He chose you to be. Now, let me ask you a question. The question is, what does that mean? What does that mean for God to choose you before the creation or before the foundation of the world? Real simple. You're, both, you're all smart here. A lot of times, why we're confused about our purpose is because we make it too complicated. Relationships are complicated. Your purpose shouldn't be. Okay? Now, obviously, the answer is simple. This, it's, God had a plan for your life before you had a plan for your life. Do you remember, I mean, some of you are in college and some of you guys are out. Do you remember when you have to speculate about your purpose of your life and you're in college and you had to pick what you wanted to do for the rest of your life? You're like, I have to do this for the rest of my life? Accounting? <laughs> yeah, I want to do that for the rest of my life. I want to crunch numbers in the office all the rich people's number, and I'll make some money out of that. Yeah, for the rest of my life, I want to be a doctor for the rest of my life so I can have no life, make a whole bunch of money so I can't use it. I want to do this for the rest of my life. So a lot of times we speculate on uh, what, my, what my purpose might be, but you see, God had a purpose, had a plan for your life before you had a plan. Isn't that refreshing to know? That's what Paul is saying. That's what the Bible is saying. That God had a plan for your life even before you knew it. I remember oh, one time someone bought me a gift, a PSP. You know what those are? Those are awesome machines. You could watch movies on it, and I, I would watch Air Force One like a million times. I would I love that movie, especially after 9-11, you know? It's like, yeah, you know? And then one time I broke it. Or actually people around me broke it. And I said, I'm a smart guy, I'm Asian. <laughs> Maybe I should open up this PSP. I could fix it. Ah, I got the, you know, the tool, screwdriver, opened it up and tried to put the button back in. And my wife was so frustrated by it, she goes, give me it, that's not how you do it. And then she puts it back in, <laughs> but it was still broken. <laughs> and that's the last time I used the PSP. A lot of times, a lot of us are trying to figure out how to fix my life, how to discover what my purpose might be. Listen, you can't discover your purpose with yourself. You didn't create it. You didn't plan it. You didn't exist. You didn't plan to exist. God planned for you to exist. And a lot of times we get confused and in trouble because we try to fix our life, and we can't. You have to see next time now. I, my son broke the PS3. You know what I did this time? Then he said, don't open it. I said, really? <laughs> I think this time I learned from my last lesson. No, take it to the shop. And I know some people in Stearns that took it. Where the hell is my PS3? <laughs> and um, now, so if you want to fix something, you want to really discover something, you have to take it back to the person that created it. Amen? Amen. Doesn't that make sense? If you take it back to the person, the creator, they understand how everything works inside and out. You just an idiot. You have nothing. You have no idea what a PSP works or a PS3 works. You got to take it back to the person, the manual, the person that created it. And that's exactly how you were dis you, you discover your purpose. How you get rid of the clutter, the confusion. How do you do that? The first lesson Paul teaches us is 
this. Look up before what? Here's the problem with a lot of people when it comes to rediscovering your purpose. You look within, you go, okay. And all the self-help, you know, successful motivational books talk about this. Look within. Look how awesome you are. Look how beautiful you are and hot you are. Look at all the gifts you have. Use those gifts to make something of yourself. That doesn't tell you what your purpose is. Because when you look within, you realize what you already know, right? Gifts, abilities, heart, experiences. You, you know the what, but you don't know the why. You don't know why those gifts, abilities, talents, looks, some people. <laughs> you don't know the reason for why you have them. You know you have them, but why you have them. And a lot of times the confusion comes and goes, I, I'm supposed to do something with it. Duh, God put it in there for a what? For a purpose, a purpose. <laughs> Catch, please. Man, helping agents you freak hard. <laughs> Lord, make us more diverse in this theater. It'll be way more exciting for me. So, look, he, he put it there in purpose. So, when you look within, you say, okay, I have these, 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 these. Now, and you go, okay, I think, I speculate that these are, why I have this is for this. No, God put it in there on purpose for his purpose before you were even born. So let me ask you a question, simple question. Do you ask or are confused about why you're here on earth? Why God put you here? Simple. How do you, how do you discover your purpose? How do you get rid of the clutter? Simple. What? Read it for me. We, we can do that, right? We can read. <laughs> look up and before. Look in. Yeah, look up before looking in. If you want to find your purpose, you should look to the person that created it. If you want to understand why your life is messed up and confusing and unsatisfying and unmeaningful, look up. He created it. Do God what's up. Look up before you look within. But there's a second problem to why a lot of people look in before they look up. And it creates this problem. It creates comparisons. Right? I want to be honest here. When you look within, you look at other people and what they have and you go, guy is much better looking than me. Why? This person's smarter than me. This person has this and this. And you start comparing what you have inside to what they have inside. And most of your life, you're trying to compensate for what you don't have compared to that person. And because we're human, we don't compare to the people walking on Madison Avenue. We compare usually to the people around us. And we're like, oh man, he's coffee. We compare with people that's right around us, our friends. And so you can't even love that friend because you're jealous. You're covetous because you don't think you have enough. But if you really understood, you looked up before, before you looked around, you would know that God gave you everything you need for what? Come on now. Oh my gosh. Let's go with the program here. On purpose. And this is exactly what the passage addresses next. Now watch. Now, in love, he what? Yes. Thus to be adopted as his sons through Jesus Christ in accordance with this? And accordance. So, this is the million dollar question, right? Why did God create you? Why did God create us? What was the reason for it? You go, well, you told us he had a purpose. Yeah, but it says very clearly... In accordance with his pleasure and? Why did he create you? Don't make it complicated. Real simple. He created you. It says pleasure and will. He likes you and wanted to. You're like, what does that mean? Meaning, he was happy about creating you. For sometimes I question why. <laughs> he was happy about. I admit, can you imagine a God that created you? Walk, you know, waking up in the wrong side of the bed? He would have made you more uglier. He would have given you less gifts. But no, it says in the Bible that when God created you, that when you were in your mother's womb, as he was creating you, he was happy about it. He wanted to create you. He wanted to. A lot of times, for a lot of us, 
we think the reason we exist is to work, prove who we are. And that's what we're trying to do in the end of the day. Why we work so hard, we're trying to really reclaim that purpose of approval for love. And that's why we get trapped in this approval game. We perform, we study, we succeed for people's approval. I don't know whose approval. There are many different kind of approval. I remember one of my friends who used to work at Goldman Sachs um, in, in the early 90s. And his main concentration was you know, um, trading in Asia, in, in investment banking, in Hong Kong, you know, in China, in Korea. And you know, he, it was a time when the economy was booming and they were making a lot of money. And they just did an IPO. And he, he thought, because the economy was booming so much, that he wanted a higher position and he went to study an MBA in Warren. For you don't, don't know that, that's UPenn, okay? And uh, the best, one of the best business programs. So he leaves Goldman Sachs and he goes to study an MBA because he thinks that having this position and this degree would guarantee him a better position in life. So what happens is, right around after he graduates, there are no jobs. Oil is skyrocketing. And he's you know, going everywhere to get a job. And this is the question they ask him. Um, you have all Ivy degrees. You worked at Goldman Sachs. Why didn't someone hire you? He goes, I don't know. And they go, no, there must be some reason. And for nine, nine months, he, couldn't have, he didn't find a job. And I said, why don't you call Goldman? Don't you know people there? And he looked at me and with, with so much shame in his eyes, and he would call me sometimes, like, Sam, I don't know if I'm ever going to work again. He said, I can't call Goldman. The people I train, they're making millions of dollars. I'm going to call them and say, hey, I don't have a job. I'm a loser. Can you hire me? I can't do that, man. And I go, oh, so you have too much pride. He goes, yeah. Maybe I have to look at something else. And for that nine-month period, this guy, on paper, a winner in every way, his identity was determined by what? His performance. The fact that he didn't have a job. The fact that other people were doing better than him, he was looking around and he said, oh, man, I'm such a loser. The guys I trained are making so much money and here I am without a job, jobless. Now, if you want to really learn to clear and get rid of the clutter of your purpose, Paul teaches us in the second way, second step. What is the second step? Always what? Before, you get that? Always look up before looking around. Because when you look around, you're going to compare. And let me tell you a definitive reality. When you look around, there will be other people hotter than you, smarter than you, and better than you. Just accept it and love yourself. The reason why you're, you are jealous and the reason why that is determining who you are is because you still don't get your purpose. But when you look up, God would remind you that he created you out of pleasure. He wanted to create you because you're the only one in this world that's like you to fulfill his purpose. And you see, when you look up, see, when, in the morning when I woke up, I don't go, what do I have to do today? How many people do that when you wake up? A lot of you wake up by your alarm, right? Damn, I have to go to work. Damn, I have to go to school. When I wake up, you know those good sleep waking, like your eyes just open? <laughs> when I wake up, I wake up like that, and I, the first thing I do is, oh, you like me, God. You go, really? Yeah. I go, you like me. You, you, you really like me. And I live according to that approval. And when I wake up and I get that, I'm very confident when I go out. Because you know what? I don't have to please anybody else. I got what I need. I got love. So I'm confident. I go to the meetings. I go, I, go, I don't give a crap what you think about me. Yeah, yeah, leave. Why? Because I'm not addicted for the proof of others. I have God. So I could live my purpose. A lot of times, we waste a lot of time living out out of jealousy. 
out of insecurity and not the approval of God. And that's why we're so lost. We do so much of that and so, so little of the purpose we're called to do. Right? You got to look up before you look around. And when you're full of God's love, when you're full of God's purpose, when you look around, you actually will care about people. You'll be happy for people. How many people here know people in your life, when you succeed, they're happy for you? Because that's rare. When you succeed, people are like, ah, this guy, damn it. They're never happy for you. You know why they're not happy for you? Because they're not happy about themselves. And they're not happy about themselves because they know God's not happy about them. That's the only way you're going to really get rid of the clutter. That God is happy that you exist. God is happy about he put you here for a purpose. Real simple. So, ultimately, in conclusion, if you don't know you were created by God and for God, you're going to be confused. Say that with me. By and for. For God. So ultimately, end of the day, if you don't know that your existence, your first purpose, is about a celebration between you and God, that God created you out of celebration, you're always going to be seeking perpetually attention from people, which wastes your purpose. You see, today, this is your first purpose. Your first purpose is to go, oh, God. You like me? You really like me? That's, what, that's my favorite part of the gospel. God, you like me? Tell me that again. I like you. All right. Woo, you know? <laughs> you like me. And so what happens is when I'm filled with God's celebration of me, what's the next thing to do? When someone likes you, what do you do? When you, if it's your bro, you're like, yo, what's up, man? You give him a hug and you give him a pound. And you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You think I'm cool? You're cool, too. <laughs> When, when romantically someone likes you, what, what, what's the next thing that, to express that you like them too? And that's what we call worship. Worship is simply, and that's why we lift our hands, worship is simply telling God, God, I love the way you like me. I love the way you planned my life. I love the way you're guiding my life. I love the way you are. That's worship. And you know what? Until you understand the foundation of your purpose, which is to worship God, you are created for his pleasure, you're always going to be confused. And that's what we're going to go into next week. How do we live then for this worship? How do we live for his glory? And this is wraps it up. Verse 6. I want us to read it together, okay? To the grace of his glorious grace, which he has freely given. and the one he loves. You see that? What is, the, well, what is our purpose? Our purpose is to love the life God's given us, the purpose God's given us, and say, God, thank you. I love the way you lead my life. I love the way you, you love me. I love the way you show me. I just love you. That's worship. That's how you live for his glory. And that's going to be the prism of the foundation of how we discover our purpose. Our purpose is celebration. God celebrate us. And that's the foundation of how God's going to use us. And we'll talk more about that next week. Let's pray together. Let's stand.